Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video clip I would like to discuss with you how we can determine the dissociation constant of a competitive inhibitor. Obviously this is a very uh, important topic uh, because uh, the dissociation constant tells us something, how strong an inhibitor actually interacts with an enzyme. And that is something that we need to know, for example, if we want to develop new drugs. So before we get started, let's quickly write down our scheme for an inhibitor. I lost my pen again. So we can write down for example, enzyme plus substrate gives us an enzyme substrate complex and this then dissociates into the free enzyme again and the product. Now the enzyme can be recycled uh, very easily and start a new round. And we know that a competitive inhibitor interacts exclusively with this guy here with the free enzyme and it does so in a reversible fashion and we form an enzyme inhibitor complex. Now the inhibitor can, for example, block the active site uh, so that the substrate can no longer bind, or the inhibitor can also interact with an allosteric site and induce a conformational change in the enzyme so that the active site gets blocked and again the substrate is no longer able to bind to the enzyme. Uh, for this uh, equilibrium here, from here to here basically, we can uh, formulate a dissociation constant and I abbreviate that as KIC. We can write KIC as this is the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the inhibitor divided by the concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex, like that. And we can immediately see that if KIC is very, very small, then, so KIC is small, then this part here of this equilibrium is very large, because we've got something divided by something very large, gives us something very small. That means that in our scheme here, the equilibrium that we have here lies very much on this side here. Or in other words, in this case, our inhibitor binds very strongly to the enzyme. So if KIC is small, Binding of inhibitor is very good. Very good. Or, in other words, the smaller KIC, the better the inhibitor. Now, let's uh, see what we need uh, to do for this case. Let's quickly write down what we know about um, our competitive inhibitor. And we can, for example, say without an inhibitor, minus IC, we have our enzyme parameters, Vmax. Vmax tells us how the enzyme behaves at very high substrate concentration, Km. This tells us something about the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate and Vmax over Km. This tells us something how the enzyme behaves at very low substrate concentrations. In the presence of the competitive inhibitor, we get our Vmax app. And app stands for apparent. This simply means that we are talking now about uh, a Vmax in the presence of an inhibitor. And we said because it is a competitive inhibitor, Vmax up stays exactly the same, so Vmax up is exactly the same as our Vmax. Km up, again, up stands for Km in the presence of an inhibitor. Km up goes up, that means the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate goes down. And Vmax 
up versus km up will therefore go down. Now we have basically two compounds or, or two parameters that we can look at uh, and uh, what we usually do is we look at this parameter and what we basically say is we measure the concentration of the or we use inhibitor concentrations and we measure the corresponding Vmax up over Km up. And the rationale is that the more inhibitor I use, the more this Vmax up over Km up will go down. So how do we uh, actually do the experiment? So let's quickly write this down. The experiment would be measure different or, or use uh, different IC concentrations and measure corresponding Vmax up over Km up. So what we could do is, for example, we get a nice table and we get, we have here our inhibitor concentration, for example, in micromolar. And here we've got our Vmax up over Km up. And that might have the unit of minute to the minus one. So without inhibitor, let's say without inhibitor, we've got the original Vmax over Km. So let's say that is uh, perhaps 100. Now in the presence of 2, 4, 6 or so on, I just make up some data here, we might get 80. So we see that Vmax up over Km goes down. Here we might have 60, here we might have 40. And uh, so, as I said, what we do is we use different inhibitor concentrations and we measure the corresponding Vmax up over Km up. And uh, what do we do uh, in this case to uh, find out our dissociation constant? Now, we use what is called a secondary plot. It's also sometimes called a Dixon plot. And in this plot, we plot on the x-axis, we plot the inhibitor concentration. So we plot our IC, and usually micromolar or something like that. And on the y-axis, we do something quite funny. Uh, in the previous slide, I told you we measure Vmax versus Km up. Now, what we plot here is exactly the opposite. So we plot Km up over Vmax up. The reason for that is uh, simply in the maths for this kind of plot. The maths is a little bit hairy and I uh, explain it in another video, but for the time being all we need to remember is that we plot actually the inverse of what we measured in the first place. So we measure Vmax up over Km, but we plot Km over Vmax up versus inhibitor concentration. And what we will get is a straight line like that. And we can extend this line into the negative range. And this point here is very interesting because this point here gives us actually minus Kic. So here this intercept is the negative of the Kic. Now I should uh, probably say that Kic, our dissociation constant, 
is always larger than zero. So Kic must be positive. A negative dissociation constant doesn't make any sense. And the unit for Kic is the same as the unit for our inhibitor. So unit for Kic would be concentration. So with that, we can very easily determine our KIC with this uh, kind of plot. And just let me quickly introduce you to the concept of the binding constant. That's very simple. So binding constant. And the binding constant, usually abbreviated as KBIC, is defined as 1 over Kic. The binding constant is the inverse of the dissociation constant and uh, therefore would have the unit of, so unit Kbic would be given as 1 over concentration. Uh, usually we don't bother too much with KBIC, with the binding constant, because we get all the important information from this KIC. So now let me quickly summarize. We defined KIC as the dissociation constant, which is given by enzyme times uh, inhibitor concentration divided by the concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex. The unit is concentration. And we said the smaller KIC, and I abbreviate that like that, the stronger the inhibitor binds. to the enzyme. And we said we can determine Kic if we plot inhibitor concentration on the x-axis and Km up versus over V max up. And we said we need to be careful because that is exactly the opposite to what we are used to, but in this case it is because of the maths. Uh, we get a straight line and this point here gives us minus Kic and Kic is always positive. So I hope uh, this makes sense and uh, you can now determine how uh, strong an inhibitor is from experimental data. Um, thank you very much for watching this video.